from the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador. I am Estefania Bravo and this is From the South. Nearly 2,000 members of the Central American migrant caravan arrived to Tijuana, Mexico on Friday. And I reported 1,500 have already put their names down on a waiting list for asylum requests. The list is being handled by the migrants themselves to be shown to U.S. immigration officials. They have asked that 150 requests be processed per day as the wait to be called up to, could take up two months. Most migrants are staying in shelters and many are reportedly unaware of the U.S. government's repeated attempts at stopping them. There are still more migrants expected to arrive this week. We are all waiting for a number to request asylum. When we are given a number, we wait. I don't know how long it will take to be called so that we can go to talk to immigration officials. But we are told it could take up to at least a month or two. We will request that U.S. authorities allow, in the name of God, 150 people per day for request hearings, to make some progress because, let's remember, these people are suffering from hunger, sunburns, dehydration, they have no money, they don't have anywhere to sleep, they have no shelter, the shelters here are full, so the idea is to create awareness because we are suffering. And as the main body of the migrant caravan continues to arrive in Tijuana, workers on the U.S. side are reinforcing the border wall with barbed wire. This as an attempt at deterring migrants from entering the country illegally. Our correspondent Pablo Perez is with the main body of the caravan and brings us this report. We're right here in Mexicali, Baja, Baja California. It's part of one of the most important border, border crossing points in between uh, uh, Mexico and the United States. Those uh, that start with Tijuana, Otay, San Isidro, Tecate, and finally Mexicali, a border crown across Calexico, California. Those are uh, the places where most of the migrants arrived yesterday, and there are still uh, some uh, buses loaded with migrants coming from Navajoa, Sonora, that's over 100 kilometers away from here, and they are en route to this place, Mexicali, but they are not sure yet where they're going to uh, end their journey, e either here or the next city, Tijuana. This is one of the, that's one of the most famous uh, border towns also. Uh, so far, we have the 175 migrants in this. This is a shelter for, uh, for migrants because these towns are really used to the migrant flux that's constant. All, the, all, all year long we have migrants f coming from uh, the southern part of Mexico and also uh, s Central and South America that they take a rest here before uh, attempting to cross to the United States and these uh, shelters that are scattered all along the border on the, on the Mexican side uh, uh, it's, uh, are useful for them to take a rest to get some food, clean clothes, and then go on on their journey. So this is the place where most of the migrants of the migrant caravan are staying to get some food, clean clothes, and then go on on their journey. So this is the place where most of the migrants of the migrant caravan are staying, but there they don't have the these shelters don't have the enough capacity to uh, hold them uh, all of them so they are distributed all over the uh, border shelters here in Baja California Mexico we thank Pablo Perez for that report and speaking at the Ibero-American summits currently going on in Guatemala, Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez has said the migratory phenomenon requires solidarity and regional coordinated solutions. The migratory flow that is happening in the region and its humanitarian derivatives also requires solidarity and regional coordinated answers. That is the reflection that I can, as a government leader in Europe, share with all of you. We need regulated parameters that guarantee the rights of migrants and that permit our societies to receive the benefits of an orderly migration. 
Believe me, I say this to you because I am well aware of the magnitude of this challenge. And above all else, not forget the lessons learned from history to prevent the advancement of speeches that exclude people. Our correspondent in Guatemala, Mario Rosales, is at the summit and brings us more details about today's events. We are in Antigua City, Guatemala, where the Ibero-American Summit is taking place and where heads of states, foreign minister and vice president of the Ibero-American official delegations arrive to this city to discuss sustainable development and how countries can reach those objectives fulfilling the 17 objectives created by the UN. Later, leaders will take part in a press conference to announce bilateral agreements. Presidents from Bolivia, Honduras, Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador and Ecuador are participating in the event. We thank Mario for that report. Moving on, social organizations in Chile protested the government's violent crackdown against the Mapuche people, which left one man dead on Wednesday. Police used water cannons and tear gas to disperse around 100 protesters outside the government headquarters on Thursday. Social leaders are calling on citizens to take action against state persecution, as well as the continued appropriation of their lands. President Sebastián Piñera pledged an investigation into the police regarding the murder of the young Mapuche. And to discuss more about the persecution of the Mapuche people, we are being joined live by Natalia Arejul, an observer for Chile's police monitoring group. Hello, Natalia. Thank you so much for joining us. We know that President Sebastián Piñera recently promised to investigate the shooting of Camilo Catrillanca. What are your thoughts about this? Do you believe justice will be served? I wouldn't hope so, um, because uh, right now, the, the police is very um, questioned by several um, events that are occurring here in Chile, uh, where you can see violence by the police, um, corruption and other um, events that make us not trust that very much in our policemen and our states. And we need to find out find out what happened here and put all our hands and our justice to this case. Now, Natalia, the Mapuche people have long faced state persecution. What, yes. what were the reasons given for one state's violent raid? Uh, right now, the, uh, the, the principal reasons are um, they, they, they think, they, they know that they're taking away his lands and there's so much violence um, from the police to the Mapuche people. So um, in this uh, particular area in uh, La Araucanía, uh, the violence is increased and the police are, the government has um, prepared the police and meet, uh, I don't know how to say it, um, meet, me, uh, militarily, but I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Metery <Military. laughs> Claro. Yes. 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 Uh, so we have a special police with a special treatment in military form, um, and that is one of the. This. I, I don't know how to say it. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit nervous. It's okay. Let me let me <laughs> ask you one one other question. So you mentioned that there was heavy police repression on Wednesday. Yes. What do you think is the next step for the Mapuche people? Right now, they're calling on uh, an uprising of the Mapuche people. So uh, we're hoping that this not bring us more violence to the zone, to the Araucanía zone, and basically that so yes, yes. We, we hope we hope so too we hope so too natalia thank you so much for joining telesur uh, we'll, thank you you too we'll take a short break now join us again in a minute
Welcome back. Teachers in Brazil are giving the proposed school without party law a failing grade. The initiative seeks to ban political opinions and debates from the classroom. Educators are resisting attacks on their freedom in the classroom, calling the move censorship. The so-called gag rule not only prevents the expression of partisan ideologies at school, but it advocates dropping subjects linked to gender or sexual orientation. It also includes strict supervision of teaching practice. The proposed law is based on the premise that family values take precedence over school education in relation to moral, sexual and religious education. He knows that teacher, public schools and university students were the ones that stood up in defense of public services, of the rights of the population and the poor. This war on education goes hand in hand with their assault on the poor. Outside the Congress, where a special commission debates the proposal, conservative pressure is mounting against the nation educators. Teachers like Luciana Pereira are opposed to what they believe is the criminalization of students who protested against the neoliberal government in Sao Paulo. Then, police came into her classroom and she was subsequently fired on her last week of work. The students were known by the police because of their protest action. They were detained, searched and threatened, even with guns pointing to their heads. Since then, I've become a victim of political persecution in my region. I was fired last year, then rehired, and because of the law, I am not allowed to resign. I was fired last year and then today again. Deputy Ana Carolina Campagnolo, while having expressed support for Bolsonaro, is now calling on students to film the indoctrination of their teachers. Students are also standing in support of their teachers. I am making a counter-proposal, which is to film these incidents unfolding at public schools in Sao Paulo. Under 20 years of the PSDV's rule, we have faced humiliation in the public education sector. There is poor structure in classrooms, and to add insult to injury, teachers are not well paid. After six failed attempts, conservative parliamentarians are finally broaching the issue at Congress. If the proposed initiative is concretized, its constitutionality could be legally contested at the level of Supreme Court. On Thursday, Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro delivered the 2,300,000 home as part of the government's public housing program, the Gran Misión Vivienda Venezuela. Speaking at a special event at the Cuartel de la Montaña, President Maduro asked members of the country's communes to continue supporting what he called an architectural revolution. He highlighted that within the next year, the government hopes to deliver 700,000 more homes in order to reach their three million goal. From this day until December 2019, we will deliver 700,000 more homes. We will reach our three million houses goal. And all of these homes are being provided through the Homeland ID card for those who are in the most need. These homes are going to single mothers, to young families, to workers, to entrepreneurs. As part of our 2025 Homeland plan, we will deliver at least 5 million new homes, if not more. And social communes in Venezuela are helping citizens learn farming skills and at the same time are supporting the nation's food sovereignty. Backyards in various neighborhoods in Caracas are being used to grow fruits, vegetables, and even raise cattle. The project is part of an initiative called the Great Agro-Venezuelan Mission, launched two years ago by President Nicolás Maduro. It encourages city dwellers to use their backyards for productive purposes and to be self-reliant in the face of ongoing economic attacks from abroad. Peru's public prosecutor has opened an investigation on former President Alan Garcia for alleged money laundering linked to the Odebrecht scandal. Garcia has been questioned at the public prosecutor office for the Lima Metro case, in which Odebrecht delivered around $24 million in bribes. The former president has been banned from leaving the country. Once again, former President Alan Garcia went to the prosecutor's office to be questioned. But this time it wasn't as a witness, it was as a suspect. There has been no questioning, because once again it was suspended. Nothing else. Thank you.
Garcia is being investigated over government concessions to Odebrecht for the Metro construction project, in which he allegedly took bribes from the company. Odebrecht's executives even admitted to paying $24 million in bribes. Garcia not only showed interest in selecting trusted officials to work in the ministry so they could facilitate the project, but he was also directing things behind the scenes to favor Odebrecht with Lima's Metro. The former anti-corruption ombudsman investigated the case and alleged that Odebrecht paid off Garcia. One of the ways they received bribes was by making them look legitimate, by taking off percentages of real payments and then fabricating receipts, making it all look legal. Although Garcia denies any knowledge of bribes at his level, which 85 percent of Peruvians don't believe according to polls, he admits mid-level staff may have been in prison for bribery. They have all been linked to corruption. There is clear evidence he's dirty. Throw him in jail. It's as simple as that. That's what he deserves for how much he hurt our country. The prosecutor's office has asked the judiciary to ban him from leaving the country so he doesn't escape justice. The Cave Hill campus of the University of the West Indies is providing assistance to retrenched public sector workers in Barbados. On Saturday, the university will provide a clinic offering free professional advice to budding entrepreneurs as to how they can implement their business concepts. The session is open to all persons. Over the next few weeks, the university would roll out a suite of other initiatives geared towards helping persons on the breadline. And less than one month after Trinidad and Tobago experienced widespread flooding, rain devastated several communities in the north, central, and south of Trinidad. The Met Office has issued an orange alert for riverine flooding, and citizens have been advised to stay away from flood-prone areas and roadways. The South Oropucha River was among several water channels that burst their banks. And the communications minister has provided a flooding update. There were a number of isolated incidents during the course of the last 24 hours due to some landslips. We've had some roads give way. There was some loss of a couple houses. I saw reports of loss of potential, um, loss of houses in Cedrus, but in San Negrani and some other areas. There have been a couple of isolated incidents that may not be attributable to the floodwaters, but we've had to send in rescue crews where there's been a person who had a stroke, another one who had a heart attack, etc. And because of the floodwaters surrounding their homes, we had to use rescue crews to get to them. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back. Protests have taken place against the former advisor to President Donald Trump, invited to speak at the Oxford Union Society. A decision to invite Stephen Bannon by the University Debating Society was met with fierce opposition from student groups who tried to prevent people from entry. Bannon did speak at the Union and defended some of his policies during his time in the White House. I despise Steve Bannon and what he stands for, but I believe we have to give people a right to speak. How is the media going to see a bunch of students protesting, shouting slogans in a violent manner, preventing entry? It's going to be seen to empower the far right because they're saying this is what they're resisting. The intolerance is on both sides. Bannon is intolerant and the students are intolerant. British Prime Minister Theresa May is attempting to saw her draft Brexit deal and save her political career. May is defending her position after four government members resigned, including Brexit Secretary Dominic Raab. There are reports that Environment Minister Michael Gove, who has been on the front line of the pro-Brexit campaign, is pinned to replace him. However, when questioned on the issue, the Prime Minister remained tight-lipped. Have you offered him the role of Brexit Secretary? Now, I don't talk about things to do with, uh, to do with the cabinet, uh, cabinet reshuffle. Uh, I haven't appointed a Brexit, new Brexit Secretary yet, but obviously I'll be doing that over the course of the next if, day or if so. If I were a betting man, or if you were a betting man, could I go down the bookies and talk about that, about Michael Gove? Is he worth now, putting money on? I have to say, Nick, I've always made it a sort of rule in my life that I don't bet on anything to do with politics. Right. I'd advise you not to either. All right, we'll have to watch and watch and wait and see. 
Moving on, U.S. President Donald Trump says he has answered written questions from special counsel Robert Mueller, but has not yet submitted them. Trump made the revelation while speaking to reporters in the Oval Office. He says while well, answered Mueller's questions very easily this week, he would exercise caution. The president did not indicate when he would hand over the answers to Mueller, who is investigating Russian meddling in the 2016 U.S. election. These members have reached a at least 40 Palestinians have been injured in renewed protests along the Israeli border in the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Ministry of Health said 30 of those hospitalized have injuries caused by live ammunition, while the rest have been hospitalized due to tear gas inhalation. Zimbabwe's opposition party has insisted that the government is responsible for success, which occurred during post-election protests in August. Presidential spokesperson of the Opposition Movement for Democratic Change, Dr. Unkululeko Sibanda, spoke to Telesur in an exclusive interview. To show you that uh, the violence, the killing, was carried out by state security agents, uh, by the military, um, and people associated with ZANU-PF, this evidence is available in video form. It's available in uh, in terms of testimony from people who could witness. It's available in any form you'd like. So uh, uh, even uh, the fact that you have a commission of inquiry is ludicrous in the sense that we do know who would have instructed or commanded the soldiers to go onto the streets. And now it's time to bring you some other stories from around the world. An Indonesian woman has been sentenced to six months in prison after exposing her boss infidelity. In a turn of events, the Supreme Court overturned an earlier decision by a court to clear Baik Nuriu Maknun of any wrongdoing. She is accused of breaking a law against spreading indecent material. The case in question dates back to 2012 when she recorded a conversation with the principal of the school where she worked who spoke of explicitly about an affair with her colleague. The Chinese president is in Papua New Guinea, attending the handover ceremony of the Chinese Assisted Independence Boulevard. Xi Jinping, along with Prime Minister Peter O'Neill, were at the ceremony of the new infrastructure project that will enable locals to travel more efficiently. Okay, okay. President Xi also attended the opening of the Butaka Academy, funded by China. It's made up of a kindergarten, a primary school, and a secondary school for over 3,000 students. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to the Chinese government because I've been teaching in this school for five years. My old school, Butuka Primary, which was in a desert. And I want to take this opportunity and privilege to thank the Chinese government for blessing us with this wonderful school. And uh, we are proud. Thank you to be, uh, to be partner and friends to China. Hundreds of Israeli settlers have taken to the streets of Tel Aviv to protest against the government's fire with Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Protesters blocked the roads and bent tires for the third day in a row. Israel and Hamas agreed to a 72-hour ceasefire after months of violence which began in July. Gaza's Minister of Health claims that over 1,400 Palestinians have been killed and over 8,000 wounded. 64 Israelis, mostly soldiers, have died since the Gaza onslaught. And we end in Cuba as Havana is celebrating the 499th anniversary of its founding. Considered one of the most historic and charming cities in Latin America and the Caribbean, a highlight of these celebrations is the chiming of the historic Havana Cathedral bells after decades of silence. The cathedral's bells were finally unveiled after undergoing a meticulous restoration process. Como signo de acción de gracias. And with that story, we've come to the end of this news brief. These and other stories, as always, find them on our website at telesurenglish.net. And also join us on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. For Telesur English, I am Stefania Bravo. Thank you for watching.